Hey guys, are you looking to build a sustainable business that you can work from anywhere? You know, kind of living that four hour work week lifestyle, you know, sitting on a beach, sipping, you know, pina coladas or Mai Tais while still running your business? If so, you're watching the right video. Welcome back to the Seller Trade Tribe channel. And if you're new, you know, welcome entirely. So my name is Fernando Cruz and I run an eight figure Amazon business that I can work from anywhere. So just to give you guys an example, uh, last month in August, we were actually working out of Mexico City for about five weeks, running our business, still growing, all from a laptop. All we needed is somewhere with Wi-Fi to you know, work a handful of hours a day. But you know, fortunately, we have over 50 employees scattered across the world that help manage the day-to-day -day of our business. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a bunch of tips of how we've been able to implement a bunch of changes in our business so that we're able to enjoy that freedom. But don't forget to subscribe to this channel below, and then you can click in the top right corner and click on the bell, and then you'll be guys will be notified of all the videos that we release just really similar to this one. So let's get started. So in 2018, uh, you know, there's a ton of things that you guys can be doing in your physical products businesses to basically make it really virtual. So all the time, you know, a lot of people kind of think that the only types of businesses that you can do that are actually virtual are kind of affiliate marketing, you know, info products, uh, you know, Facebook ad agencies, the kind of dropship model. But you know, they kind of overlook the physical products game just because you know you have you know physical inventory. And so there's a ton of ways that you can do that and the things that we've actually implemented in our own business that I wanted to share with you guys to help you guys being able to achieve that personal freedom. Because you know, nowadays, like our generation really doesn't want to be beholden to a specific city. Like even though I love living in Los Angeles, I want the freedom to go hang out in London, let's say, or Tokyo for six months if I really want to. So let's, let's dive in a little bit deeper into some of these tactics that we've done. You know, I think one of the really important things to mention is there's so much cloud technology right now in software that makes it much, much simpler to be running a business from anywhere than there was, you know, maybe five years ago. And so we'll be covering a bunch of those tools as well that we use in our own business to help make it more scalable and uh, more virtual for you guys. So the first tip, and this one's kind of a no-brainer, but don't get an office if you really don't want to be stuck in one place. So we've gone through the entire spectrum. So for when Nick and I first started, we were working out of our apartments, kind of switching off every day. And so we were working in basketball shorts and t-shirts most of the time. Then at a certain point, you know, we decided to get an office. So we got a super nice, kind of expensive WeWork location, which was great because we were, you know, it was just the two of us and we we're going to an office every day and there was other people. But, you know, at, at that point, to be honest, we were generating millions of dollars a year just from our apartment. So we really didn't need like an office or even like that many employees at the time. But we decided to go to an office so that we'd kind of be like grown up to go to an actual office. But like we realized we were spending way too much money. And so what we ended up doing was like downsizing to a much smaller, much more reasonable place. So we don't care if we, you know, I think our rent is about $1,500 a month now. So we don't really care if like, you know, we're not there if we're traveling. And it makes it a much, it reduces our, our OPEX a ton so that we're not, you know, kind of wasting rent when we're out traveling. Tip number two is, you know, very closely related to that but it's hiring remote employees. If you start setting a standard where you're hiring employees, you know, that are either gonna be working with you locally, then, you know, you're kind of training them to be able to ask you questions on an everyday basis. And that's kind of what you really want to avoid. So if you look at our, and our staff of about 50 people now, a majority of them are actually based overseas in the Philippines and in China. And so that's a huge advantage for us in a, a few different ways. So number one is, you know, our China employees, you know, uh, understand like the cultural norms of China much better. So they're able to negotiate way better pricing than we are. And then our team in the Philippines and, and in China as well, you know, you, the cost of living in those countries is a lot less than, you know, in the US or definitely way more than LA. And so we're able to, to leverage that and we've been able to hire way more employees overseas and makes it so that we can actually take on more projects, launch more products every single month while again, keeping our salary costs or 
much, much lower than it would be if we were bringing on those people in the US. And again, if you're hiring US employees, whether you're at home or if you're traveling again, you know, through Colombia, then you know they're used to working on their own. And that's where it, you're really setting up the right type of company that you want to run. And I think that was a big conversation that Nika and I had really early in our business was like, you know, for us, we really wanted the flexibility and the freedom to travel. And so, you know, as we were growing, we were scaling, we kind of lost sight of that. But now like, we've definitely like, you know, realized, okay, this, this is a really big priority for us. And so now almost all of our team is based overseas. And then tip number three, so setting a schedule. It really, really helps when you're traveling often and you're kind of going from place to place to kind of set a schedule. You, you know, I'm gonna work from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. every single day or whatever it may be. Maybe it's longer than that, uh, depending on how much work you have to do. But really setting a schedule really helps when, you know, when you're constantly adjusting to new cities. And a big thing that we did, like especially in Mexico City, is we got a gym membership. So we're trying to basically reacclimate our, our lives, you know, setting a new routine. But I think that's one of the really fun things is that you're able to set a new routine. So if you want to set, you know, half an hour aside or an hour aside to read or to listen to podcasts or whatever, you're gonna have way more time to do those things, especially when you don't have the normal commitments that you do have in your normal home city. And if you guys are looking for some inspiration on this, I cannot recommend this book enough. It's probably the book that I've actually gifted the most uh, in my entire life to pretty much all my family and close friends. But it's actually the 4-Hour Work Week. It's by Tim Ferriss. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. But this was a huge, huge inspiration for us in terms of starting our own business and just a lot of the, the systems and process that he's kind of talked about, you know, hiring overseas virtually, you know, creating his muse, all those concepts I think were really, really big for us. So um, definitely pick this up if you haven't read it and you're really passionate about uh, starting a business that you can run from remotely. That's like a big key. But yeah, actually I'm really curious if you guys have read that book. Let me know in the comments below if you have. Uh, and then another one of my favorite books, I actually just let a friend borrow it so I don't have it with me, uh, but it's called Vagabonding. It's by Rolf Potts. And in that book, he talks a lot about, you know, extended travel and traveling the world and kind of like the, the kind of guide towards that. So it's another great book to pick up if this is something that you're really seriously considering. Tip number four is uh, using a 3PL instead of setting up your own warehouse. So this is obviously like, again, a no brainer, but you know, a lot of bigger e-commerce companies, uh, you know, ones that do not want to be run virtually will often get a warehouse and that's totally fine. But I will tell you, you know, having a warehouse is definitely going to keep you more likely in your home city. So, you know, we've, uh, we've elected to probably pay a little bit more of a premium, uh, but we use a 3PL and it helps us a ton in terms of scalability because we're not, you know, signing leases to these specific warehouses. And that means, you know, if we kind of uh, run out of capacity, we can always switch to a larger 3PL without even thinking about it or kind of start splitting shipments, things like that as we've grown really, really quickly uh, throughout the years. And the nice thing is that they're experts in fulfillment. So everything from like, you know, kind of SLAs, to how quickly they turn around, like, you know, if you're gonna get a bunch of orders because of, you know, some big promotion that you're gonna be doing, uh, they can hire temporary workers really quickly and you don't have to worry about it. And that's been honestly one of the, the biggest things. I think we probably have about 1,500 pallets at any given point in time um, at our 3PL, not even what's included in FBA. And so that's a huge thing. And then on top of that, uh, obviously Amazon fulfillment program, the like FBA, is a huge reason uh, why we're able to scale. We do over probably, like give or take, 60, 70,000 orders a month now. And there's just absolutely no way that we would be able uh, to manage that type of fulfillment without Amazon's program. We've never managed a warehouse, so that's just not our skill set. So we really try to leverage people that are experts in specific areas so that we can kind of enjoy that personal freedom. And again, like honestly, they're probably gonna make a lot less mistakes than people. Amazon's FBA program also ensures that you're getting your products to your customers within two days with prime shipping, and that's huge. Recently, you know, because Amazon's becoming such a behemoth within the e-commerce world, customers are really starting to expect two-day shipping. You know, Walmart's trying to come up with their own two-day shipping process and all that kind of stuff, but Prime is 
huge. I will tell you for the Amazon customer, um, from the studies that I've seen, it actually has a 30% lift on your sales if your products are prime. So I definitely recommend you guys doing that. And then, you know, how our 3PL and FBA work together is that we'll send most of our shipments, our bigger shipments, to our 3PL, and then we'll slowly drip in the inventory to FBA. And the reason that we do that is that Amazon's FBA program, especially during Q4, is really expensive. They kind of jack up the rates for uh, their storage fees, but overall their storage fees are pretty high normally. So we'll send a majority of our products uh, to our 3PL, and then sending a weekly shipments into FBA, which helps us overall reduce our storage costs, which is huge as you're growing your e-commerce business. The next tip is really standardizing all of your systems and processes. So this is gonna be super, super helpful and make your trip a lot better when you're traveling, is creating a bunch of SOPs or doing training videos, things like that. So some of my favorite tools are Loom, and cloud app and then basically it's really easy to record a video or record like a, a screenshot depending if you're trying to show somebody on your team something and then you could you could be showing them how to create like let's say a multi-channel fulfillment order you could just um, kind of drag it record your screen as you're doing you can talk into your computer or to your mic and so you're explaining what you're doing and then i'll just send that to somebody on my team and they know exactly how to do it going forward and then if you're really wanting to create awesome processes, which I really recommend, is you know they have that video and then you ask them to create an SOP. So this is how you create a multi-channel fulfillment order. And then you know we'll probably include that in Google Docs or some kind of wiki and then have that you know standardized for all of you. And that's super helpful as you guys scale to, to really building out your trainings. Because like the worst thing that you can do is you know, let's say you've been doing this task for a long time, you decide to hire somebody, you know, you train them, you invest in them, and maybe they leave, or maybe they're not that great of an employee. And then so you hire somebody else, and then you have to train them again. And you know, maybe a year down the line, they leave, and then you have to kind of keep doing that. But if you really invest in creating, you know, a good process and system right in the beginning, then one, they're gonna make less mistakes. But two, you can save so much time in terms of training by having these kind of processes all documented and it just makes it way simpler in the long run. Okay, so now I wanna jump into some of my favorite tools that will help you guys in this journey. So WhatsApp and WeChat. These are two of like the most common like kind of text messaging kind of uh, messenger apps that we use often. WeChat is super popular in China, so it's perfect for working with our Chinese manufacturers. WhatsApp has been really, really helpful for some Chinese manufacturers that use it for whatever reason, and it's really popular uh, internationally, so you can use that uh, if you're trying to get a hold of somebody. For our internal communication, we love Slack. It's really, really helpful, kind of brings back the old kind of chat room functionality. So we have finance channels, we have new products channels, we have like logistics channels, inventory planning, just depending on how big your team is and what you're trying to do. You can also direct messaging people, but also the cool thing is that you can see like all the history, you can attach files. I cannot say enough great things about Slack. It's super, super helpful. It has a mobile app, so you can be getting messages while you're traveling, again, as long as you have Wi-Fi or internet. So that is huge. I haven't used it as much, but a lot of people I know love Basecamp, and so I'll let you guys do your own research. Basecamp kind of integrates both the communication and like a lot of the project management tools you would see like in an Asana or Trello. So it's more integrated, which is really cool. But personally, we decided to keep it separate. In terms of task management and keeping your team organized, super, super important if you're traveling. So the big players are Asana and Trello. So they have a lot of like different functionalities like you know Kanban boards and things like that. But the overall gist is that, you know, you shouldn't be assigning tasks to somebody via chat like it's just easy to get lost so like you know the reason that you know an asana exists is to keep organized and then so that you can say like hey i need you to refund this customer by this date and then you assign it to a specific person on your team and then it's organized and then so you guys have a record of it and it's really really helpful so those are the best ones we actually use getflow so one to check out in our own business we really like it but yeah just figure out throw those all those options out there for you guys for video conferencing so a lot of time you know i want to do a face-to-face -face or maybe a one-on-one -on -one with one of our colleagues we'll usually 
use uh, Google Hangouts. It's completely free, it makes it really easy, and you're able to connect with someone so much better when you do have like a face-to-face -face conversation. And then when I'm traveling, I'll also set up, uh, set up like a unlimited Skype number so that I can call the US. I think it's like, you know, $6 a month for unlimited. So it's super, super easy. And then, yeah, I mean, we were working on a bunch of financing stuff. So I was talking to a lot of banks back in LA and internet and nationally when I was in Mexico. And that made it really, really simple for payments. What I really love is Ping. So that's been one that I've been using a lot recently. So um, we use that to pay our contractors. We use it to pay our suppliers. We'll even use it to pay some of our domestic partners, like you know our 3PLs, because it's actually way faster than setting up an ACH payment. So Veeam is a really great one. A lot of people will use TransferWise as well for some contractors, and some people will use PayPal, but PayPal out of those three has the highest fees, so I probably wouldn't recommend it, but just throwing out all the options available. Oh yeah, and if you're interested in learning more about Veeam, I created another video that you guys can find as well on our channel that, that discusses exactly how we use it in our business as well. And then, so there's a ton of tools that I just kind of mentioned, and our Facebook community asks us to kind of organize this. So in the link below, there's gonna be also access to our crafting guide, and the crafting guide has a bunch of discounts and all these tools listed for you guys, just to make it a little bit easier for you guys uh, to take advantage of. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Those are most of the tools that we use uh, to run our business virtually and yeah you guys can totally do this I mean you know a lot of people think that you know as you scale you you need the office and everything else and that's completely not true I mean now we're well into the eight-figure level and we're, we're able to run the company completely virtually so I hope that if you guys are really serious and really passionate about this that this video inspires you guys um, to make the changes towards that kind of lifestyle all right guys, did you guys find that information helpful? If you did, please let me know in the comments below. I really hope that you guys are on your way for building a really profitable virtual business so that you can be uh, traveling around the world with us.